have paid in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you because it's you who supply for us. It's you who gives us everything. You give us that money. That's why we need to, 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 to help to do to, to help to build the kingdom. Praise the Lord. Thank Amen. you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much for Mommy P. Um, next on the program is what we termed as the tips. Um, that will be um, taken by Sister Orphan. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just try and see if I can share share my screen. Okay. Um, let's give it a go. That one. I've got Basima to help me here. So. <laughs> can 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 you see my screen at all? Yes. You yes. can see it. Yes. Yeah. I'll just minimize this and we'll go from here. So, I first of all just want to say. Happy Mother's Day to you all, lovely ladies. God bless you all. Um, I want to take this opportunity to appreciate his Saifi, you know, for this great opportunity to speak today. I am truly, 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 truly grateful. And I don't take it for granted at all. So let's get started. Um, many years ago, when I started my, my career as, as a doctor, I realized how powerful it is to actually listen to a person. So in, in recent weeks, I've been looking more deeply into the power of listening to people and acting in an empathic way. And that's what I just want to talk, talk to you about today, um, the, the top tips for showing um, empathy. So um, empathy is one of the most delicate things we have yet. It's amazing how little of, of it we, we actually see, pa particularly in a world where there is so much distress, like now, you know, there's so much pain, so a lot of ill illnesses, there is anger, there is fear, there is anxiety, there is job losses, there is grieving. So the importance of em empathy cannot be overemphasized. So as a woman, as a mother, as a daughter, as a sister, as a friend, as a husband, and for me, as a doctor, but most importantly, as an um, ambassador of God. So um, I would be, before I speak about those top tips, I would quite like to clarify the difference between sympathy and empathy, because sometimes these, these two are often confused. So, and just to be clear as well, I'm speaking about compassionate empathy. So let's, let's define sympathy and empathy. So um, sympathy is how we feel, how you feel about a si situation, a feeling or a concern, you know, for some, someone who is in pain or in a situation, just imagine somebody slams their hand in, you know, with the car door. How pain yeah. can that be? So That's just in, just in imagining that pain mm -hmm. and full stop. But empathy actually goes a bit further. It, it goes on to act on those feelings. For example, you're kind of thinking, oh, this person, the hand is hot and you rush and you put uh, some cold compress on on it to, to relieve pain or you give some pain relief med medication whatever it is so em empathy goes on it does not just feel it but it goes on to act on it so it shares in the emotion of of that per person at that time it tries to put you know you are trying to put 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 yourself in 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 their place you know imagine what they are fe feeling at mm -hmm. that time and you know there is there's this saying that you cannot judge someone unless you have walked a mile in in their shoes and for for me to be on, honest unless you've even stood in their shoes you know you don't even have to to walk you just have to learn to see that experience from their own perspective so when that ha ha happens you you want to automatically provide that need or that help or, or that relief to lighten that load. For example, the, the, the person that, you know, slammed their hand against the car door, you, that cool compress or pain reliever, whatever helps to, re, 
to, to lighten that load, if you like. So let's, let's look at examples of em empathy. Jesus Christ was the ultimate example, to be, be honest. He, because of his humility, he was born as a human being. So he had that human experiences, just the same experiences that we have. You know, we, we are tempted, we are offended, we've been lied against, we've been betrayed, we've been be beaten. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, he was even killed as, as well. He experienced grief. He experienced sad, sadness. So these experiences gave him that uh, ability to empathize with, with us in our own weaknesses. And in the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are so many examples where Jesus showed em empathy. And just, just to point out in Luke 7, this is the story of the, the, the we widow son who who had died and G just was was just passing through the city and he noticed the funeral he he noticed that the, the woman was mourn, mourn, mourning mm -hmm. so he did not only feel compassion but he he went ahead to do something about it. so he rose that boy from the dead there thereby helping to lighten that load and that is what empathy is all about so um i will give some more pra pra practical examples of you know sympathy and empathy so somebody feels bad for a friend who has lost their spouse yeah full full stop you actually feel bad but empathy you you go on to visit them and you dive into the the ugliness of the grief regardless to try and lighten that load and see where you can help Sim Sympathy again. Somebody feels sorry for a per a person who got laid off from work. Full full stop. But empathy, the, the person go, goes ahead to meet with this person for lunch. I mean, all just now you can't really do all all of that because of COVID. But things are still done online and on the phone, and you help them find a job. That is em empathy. And I'm going to just say my a bit about you know like my own experience in, in my own home, just not to flaunt, flaunt anything, but just to encourage all others and, and to encourage especially our, our men. So sympathy, for example, I return from work. This happens all the time. And I'm so exhausted. And my husband says, I know you must be exhausted. <laughs> and full stop, that is sympathy. But then he goes on to add, don't worry, I will sort Sima out and get you dinner while you rest. So he tried to put himself in my own shoes and try to lighten that load, that burden. So in Galatians 6 verse uh, 2, I hope everybody can still hear, hear me. Yes. yes. Okay. So in Galatians 6 verse 2, God says here, help each other with your troubles. When you do this, you truly obey Christ. And the Bible also says that God is the God of all compassion. So we need to be like him. But at this point, you might be thinking, why bother? What's the point? I mean, after all, we are born, we do all the in-between stuff and we die. But if you actually say that kind of thing, you will discourage a lot of people though. So, or you, you might even be think, thinking, why should I, I mean, I, I don't think I can be empathic. I'm, I mean, I have my own fair share of struggles. I, I, I am not going through the same experience that they are going, going through. So I don't know if I can, I can help, but let's be on, honest here. Li living a life where we employ em empathy is difficult, even for me. And that's why we, we, we often don't uh, do it, but, our uh, experiences don't have to be the same. It, they, they don't have to be equal. You just have to be willing to walk in that person's shoes to just lighten that load for that person. Mm. So why is empathy in, in, important? Um, the world is already divisive enough. We can practically disagree on everything, even the smallest thing. Especially looking at what is happening in the whole world now, cultural di diversities, the 
the, with the talk about race, you know, I'll, okay, I'll give you an example. You are driving to work or you are a, a passenger in a car and you realize someone just wants to cut into your lane. What do you do? Do, mm. you, do you pull your, your car for what? Just so that person does, does not get getting or you do, do you pull back and just let the, per, the person in yeah. now for most of us we, we just pull our car for, forward i put my hand up as, as well i yeah. might even go ahead and say you wait your turn yeah. now let's practice empathy here yeah. maybe this person just lost their job maybe they have had trouble that morning trying to get their kids to school and now they are running late for a really important interview and they just want to cut into your lane to be able to get there. Or maybe they are just being crazy, crazy, crazy or horrible. Um, I don't know. That is the point. We don't know. But if we sit back and just practice empathy, and try to think, why is this person acting the way they are acting? It will profoundly change the way we make our decisions and the way we look at pe people. Mm -hmm. And it can make you see pe people in a new light and grasp why they feel mm -hmm. how they feel. It brings families together. It brings unity. It brings children and parents together. It brings friends together. It brings the church together together, it brings even colleagues at our, 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 our work together. If you have time, please read First Peter 3, 8. Empathy breathes life into people's healing. Sometimes at my work, I don't even have to give somebody any med medication. Just listening to them is enough. Mm -hmm. It improves strong working re relationships. It improves pe people's skills. It ushers in, believe it or not, it ushers in peace, purpose, and it brings joy. Okay, just before we, we go on, I would just like to um, clarify here a misconception. Some people think that if you show empathy that you, you, you appear weak, but in fact, it shows strength. It shows great strength. It makes you emotionally intelligent. It makes you very powerful, very strong. It makes you resilient. It makes you a leader. And you will be considered an, an asset in any organization. You'll be considered, your husband will consider you an as asset. Your wife will consider, consider you an asset. You'll be an asset to your children. You'll be an asset to your grandchildren. Children. You will be an asset in, in your place of work. You will be an asset in church. So you might now be asking yourself or thinking, okay, now I've learned a bit about empathy. How do I go about showing or learning to, to do this? So one thing I would like us to, to remember is the fact that God has created us this, this way. Some people are just great at showing it more, more than all others. And when you begin to learn to show em, em, empathy, you, you may not be great, great, great at it. It's okay. It's okay. You, you might be nervous about showing that commitment. It's okay. It does not mean you are doomed to fail. It just means pra practicing it. And it's something that can be pra practiced. And practice, we know, makes Perfect. So let's look at the, the top tips now. So first things first, you have to choose. You have to choose. It, it is a choice. You have to choose to empathize. And I just pray for each and every one of us here that, that we will choose to empathize. The next thing that we need to do is that we need to actively lis listen. You have to give some, somebody your full attention. You, you use your eyes your ears, your gut instincts, you try to understand the entire message. You listen for key words and you look at their body language. How are they? Are they frustrated? Are they ang angry? Are they scared? Avoid arguing with that person at the time. Be very flexible. Be very open-minded. Don't, don't already go into the situation with a preconceived idea. Keep your mind op 
open. Don't know what to expect. Now, the fourth thing is put yourself second. Every once in a while, you just put your own self second really and when you have time also read philippians 2 verse 3 to 4 just try to put aside your own viewpoint and see things from the other person's perspective you know then you you can actually recognize that that behavior that you thought was of over emotional stubborn or even unreasonable is as a simple reaction based on that person's previous knowledge or the person's previous ex experiences in life. It's our experiences that shapes us. It's our experiences that shapes our thinking. It's our experiences that shapes our ac actions. Number five, take the aside of the, of the story. Because no one acts the way they act without the reason. So just again, remember that their experience has made them who they are. Um, six, acknowledge it. Whenever somebody says some, something, act, acknowledge it. Or if you notice something, act, acknowledge it. It does not mean that you have to agree with, with that person at, at all. Number seven, think the opposite of what the, oh, that person is, 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 is thinking. You never know. That person might actually be thinking good. He might actually be thinking they are doing you good. So always think maybe this, this person is trying to do me good. Now take, take ac action. Now this depends on the situation, the individual, their emotions at the time. And there is a situation that, that happened once and I was so amazed. There was one of my um, husband's friends, his father, his, father, his father died. And at this time, the father died. He did not have a job. He lost his job. So the funds was, wasn't there to fund the, the funeral. His friends also did not have money. But it took one friend to, get, to gather all the other friends. And they contributed money. And this money was so much more that this man did not even need money for the, for the father's funeral. So that, that is M. So even if you don't have, you, you can look at ways to help somebody. Also, teach your kids. Let's teach our kids how to empathize. The, the other day, about Sima came and said, oh, that the teacher was really, really, or really mad as a child who did, did not submit all her work the day before. And she, she went on about the fact that the teacher was, was, was angry. And I said, let's stop here. Let's be empathic. Let's apply empathy. Now, if you were to, to be with, with this child at school, you would walk up to this child and say to this child, I'm sorry that you, you had to go through this, that you were not able to submit your, your work. Are you okay? Is everything okay at home? It could be that the, there was an internet failure. It could be that the child had a sore tummy. But if you don't spend time to explore why somebody has acted in the way they acted, how can we help? So it's important that we teach our kids. It, it does not have to always be in a crisis situation. And remember, practice these skills often. I cannot say this enough. You will be a great asset into any organization in your home, the church, the workplace. In fact, people will, you will build a reputation for being care, caring, trustworthy, and approachable. So we are just coming to, to, to the end now. Em, em, empathy, as we have learned, is the ability to feel for others, but not just feel, but to act on, on those things. It's one of the components of emotional intelligence. It helps strengthen relationships, builds trust, it heals wounds. And for me, it's a powerful tool for evangelism. It's not always easy to do, I, I have to say, but you can start with your family, you can start with your child. And remember, practice makes perfect. I would just like to finish off with, uh, with this story. Not a story, but it's something that happened. But I was at work in one of my out of hour shifts late night, and I saw a telephone triage, a telephone call that I had to do. I already anticipated that that was going to be a difficult consultation, but I kept my mind open because it was about a toothache. And there is always, you know, we GPs don't like to deal with tooth 
egg. So I already knew. So by the time I spoke to this man, he was so frustrated. He was in a lot of pain. And he said, no doctor wants to help me. So I listened and I listened. And apparently the, the dentist had given him an appointment that, that night. But he was in Dundee. And he went on, you know, how am I going to get, get to Dundee? I don't have transportation. I can't afford it. I've got a five-year-old daughter. How am I going to get to uh, don't don't be any. Um, you know, I just want you to prescribe me an, an antibiotics. So I said to him, I I really appreciate where you are coming from. I understand, but the difficulty is I cannot prescribe you antibiotics. I tell you what, let's do do something here. Phone the then the then dentist back. Get an a, a appointment, and I will book an ambulance for you. And the man, and I said, I'll call you back in 30 minutes. And when I called this man back in 30 minutes, it was as if I was speaking to a completely different per person. This man said to me, I've, I've spoken to them. They've given me an appointment for, for to, tomorrow. But the truth of the matter is, I actually feel better. Half the, the pain, I feel half of that, that pain because I, I spoke to, to you and you, and you actually listened and you took steps to help, help, help help me i wish he made a profound statement he said i wish i spoke to you first and i'm i'm, 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 I'm we are we are talking 11 p.m at night what had he gone through all all day so that really really touched me and i just thought i shared this and i i pray that we all live an, an empathic life in the mighty name of jesus amen 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 thank, thank you so much thank you thank you so much powerful powerful Thank you so much for that, um, Sister Often, um, Empathy is something like, for me, if you go to offices, they teach you, is a must topic. If you go to any, well, for care industry, is a must topic. I started another job, is a must topic. So we really need it here in the church, because, I mean, you really can't do without it. Thank you so much for that. So for now, I'll hand over to Sister Margaret. You've got the floor. How many minutes do I have? Because my program is different. I'm sure we're from. Yeah, you, you have about 30 minutes. And right. Just go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Ma. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah. I'm blessed to be a woman. I'm blessed to be a mother. I cannot swap it for anything. <laughs> Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, oh. Yeah, so, Mother's um, Day. I know today we have um, a children on this, uh, our kids, they are here on this program. So is that okay if all the children can unmute? Because I have a question for you. All the kids, Basima, can you hear me? All the kids, I have a question for you. All of you. So unmute. All the children unmute. Can you hear me? Okay. So this is the question for all the children. You have to be honest, okay? And I'm not getting you in trouble. So don't worry. We are just having fun. So I don't hope this will not be a problem. <laughs> so don't worry about it, okay? Okay, Basima, okay. Uh, Alina, Latisha, I'll be going uh, one by one. So if you had a... TV remote. Oh, yes, sir. What button would you use most <laughs> to your parents? <laughs> if you had a TV remote, what button would you use most you know. to control your parents? So I'll start with uh, Basima. <laughs> uh, maybe back. Back. Yes. Okay. Why back? Because I can, so I can make them go backwards, and I can, and I, and I can make them, and like I can make them um, go back in time. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. What about you, Alina? I would use the volume button. Oh, that's nice. Why? Um, so sometimes I could meet them and make them talk quieter. 
<laughs> oh, what about you, Latisha? <laughs> Latisha, I can't hear you. Did you hear that? No. No, Latisha, you speak louder. I would use the on and off button so I can turn them on and off. Oh. <laughs> and why? So if, they're talk so if they're talking to me and I don't want to talk to them, I could just turn them off. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Joseph? Subtitles. <laughs> why? Why subtitles? <laughs> Because don't think you sing in the shower and it's too loud, so. <laughs> Do you all hear that? <laughs> what about you? Um, I would use the volume up and down button because sometimes mum is very loud. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did I miss anyone? Oh, Daniel! Yeah, Daniel! Daniel. You're not going to get in trouble. I know that that is a past about which. I'd probably use, I'd probably use uh, the record button so that I can record when they say some things and when I'm in an argument with them, I can play what they said. In oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. What about you, Kona? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, I would use the pause button. <laughs> the pause? Oh, why pause? <laughs> so I can put them in the bath and pour tons of tomato sauce on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Did I miss anyone? <laughs> Maybe Harris. Where's Harris? <laughs> I'm okay. Ken, oh. oh, Ken. You've missed out Ken. 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 Oh, hi. Uh -huh. What about you, my darling? The pause button. She likes to pause me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Joseph is being honest and I've never helped him in any way. So he doesn't know any advice I've given him. <laughs> what about you, Mama? <laughs> Uh, probably to have fear of God and worship God and read my Bible and stuff. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> At least I have one who listens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else, Latisha? Latisha, we can't hear you. Latisha. Alina, can you hear us? Alina, Latisha, what is the best advice mom has given you? Um, the best advice is to be happy. Sorry, uh, did you hear that? Be happy. Be happy, I think. Okay, be happy. What about you, uh, Latisha? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Alina. Mine was to um, always have faith and be yourself. Oh, that's nice. What about you, Kona? Uh, to not run on the road. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Daniel? Oh, what about you? Melissa, what about you? Um, what does mom say? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Tell you not to do. Um, um, um. Okay, she doesn't know. <laughs> okay, we'll come back. What about you, Daniel? Your parents are going to be here forever, so you should appreciate them while they're here. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Did I miss anyone? Oh, yeah, uh, Basima. Um, what about Basima? To do um, 
some learning so I can get some new toys. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> that's not a good line, I suppose. Well done to all the children. You've done well. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for all your contribution. So now it's a uh, mommy's time. It's a uh, mommy's time. Mommy, mommy, mommies. Can all mommies uh, unmute so that I'll start with the first question. <laughs> So, uh, to, uh, kids, all the children, you have to listen to this uh, because uh, it's for you. Guys. So, um, the question for all the mummies is, is there anything you did not like as a child that you find you do to your children? Did you all hear that question? Yeah. <laughs> Repeat. Is there anything you did not like as a child that you find you do to your children? Mm. So I'll start with a uh, Dr. Ophon. Repeat <laughs> your, your question, please, sorry. Okay, so is, uh, the question is, is there anything you did not like as a child that you find you do to your children? Yeah. Yeah, please. Huh? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just want one. One is shout shouting. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> one who help me. Amen, amen. What about you, Mommy Afi? Oh, in fact, what jumped at me, apart from what I often said, which I know I do as well, is forcing my son to eat. I will always say, this is good for you. And I never liked it when my, 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 my dad would say, you eat beans. But I, I more like tell my son, you have to eat beans. It's good for you. So I, I tell him, you eat because it's good for you, not because you want it. And I never liked that when I was young. Oh, amen. Oh. What about you, Martha? Man is a bit like uh, Sister Ify, making my children eat f food that they don't like. I still make them, <laughs> tell them they have to eat it and finish their food, even if they don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, uh, <laughs> Mommy P? It's not touching. <laughs> what about you, Mommy P? Hey, where, uh, cooking. <laughs> can you hear? <laughs> yes, Mommy P. Can hear you? <laughs> I like it. People, I like it. My children like to cook stir. for me, but I never like uh, cooking. Even oh. you, Tanya, I, like, I, I always tell you to cook. <laughs> <laughs> if I come to your house, you cook, I'm looking. <laughs> oh, that rubs is cooking, I suppose. <laughs> we want a good grill. Okay. Uh, uh, what about... Uh... Mommy Salabi? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, I, what comes to mind is when I try to stop them from doing sleepovers. When we were young, we used to love to go and do, spend holiday with some other friends, you know, and um, they would stop us and I didn't like it. But when my own children were growing too, they too wanted to do sleepover. They, they now call it sleepover in their own time. And we ne I never really allowed it. <laughs> That's you. a good one. Yes, I can relate <laughs> to that one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes, mommy, mama queen. Um, I didn't like be shouted at, but I shouted at them. Not intentional, but it's just like <laughs> a way of trying to be fame, to let them know, because I play with them. But I use that to differentiate being fame. And now I'm, I'm just for them to be able to see that and now I'm serious. But it shouldn't be that way. But I didn't like it. I just felt you can talk to me calmly without shouting and I'll get the message. But it just comes out like that. Another one also is, I really don't like making my hair, but I want to leave that <laughs> way. I, I, that's why I cut my hair. I get 
part of it. But I want to like, oh, I need want to make your hair. I want to see your hair look neat. And sometimes when you're combing it, it's like, <laughs> like, don't worry, you know. But I really like it. And my mom was like, you always cut your hair. You don't like it in your hair. But I really. So that's more about me. <laughs> okay. So who else did I miss? Is it just me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for me, I think it's just me. Just okay. Just okay. Okay, for me, that. it's shouting. My voice is loud. Like, I wish I can turn it down just to be, uh, I can um, put my point at, across, but no shouting. So I don't, loud, I don't like shouting because my mom used to shout. But yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I don't like telling my kids, um, you know, to uh, repeat myself over and over. I just want to say something and oh, okay. But I used to hate it when my mom expected uh, that with me. So that, that I don't like. Okay, thank you mm. very much, moms. I'm sorry, can I say thank one you. more thing? Yeah. Like you said so much. Like you start taking drugs. Somebody influences it. Friends makes you to start doing it. So I try to tell mm -hmm. them to know the truth for yourself. It's like telling them okay. you need to know God for yourself. Because if you know God for mm -hmm. yourself, you know things that you mm -hmm. shouldn't do. You read the Bible, you know that, okay, the Bible says this. So I always like, Bible, tell them about God and just tell them that they need to be independent and be faithful and be truthful to themselves. That's the Thank advice. you. Thank you very much. Uh, last one, Martha. Oh, what was the question about the advice for the younger yes, yes. people? Uh -huh. Yeah, yes. yeah. Um, I think the advice I can give you is, uh, as adults, we've been we've gone through a lot of things that make us think and act the way we do. So. And I know when you're a child, you don't see it that way when your parent tells you do this or don't do it. Mm -hmm. But if they can understand that we are talking, we are coming from the point of we've seen a lot of things. So when we are telling them not to do something, they should know that it's for a good reason. As parents, we don't want anything bad for our children. We only want good things to our children. So if they can look, if they can look at that and also the um, what we are giving him, the way we are bringing them up, we are telling them, we are showing them what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. And most, I think most children know it, but sometimes they have that rebellious thing that, oh, my friends are doing this, my friends are doing that. If we can learn how to, how to, to deal with that, I think it will be best, it will be good. And also to get things, to get to children to understand that they cannot always follow other people. If a child goes and jump off a bridge, are, are you going to follow them just because it's your friend? So we have to, to, to let them understand that we want what's good for them. We want their good. Yeah. Amen yeah. and amen and amen. What a great Mother's Day. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you uh, we, ho uh, we all had fun. I hope uh, all the children who, who joined us today, you've learned something. And I hope you can take every uh -huh. advice that, uh, that's been given from uh, your parents and your aunties, uncles, everyone. So we just thank God for today. Mother. Over to Mama. Happy Mother's Day and to Mary. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, please, um, I just want us to mute ourselves because so that we don't have, um, um, yeah, praise the Lord. So um, because of time, I'll just quickly go into um, just a short um, um, session, just a very, very short one that will go um, straight to the point. Um, we've all heard about what a woman is, what we think about when we talk about a woman, when we say a mother, what comes to our mind, you know, just, just be like somebody that knows everything, that can, that we can rely on, that is strong, that understands, that cares. When we talk about a woman, we think about somebody that is always there, a power, a superwoman, you know. But what I can tell you today is that a woman is also somebody that has huge problems. A woman is that kind of, um, the, the kind of person that her problems are so complicated, are so much, you wouldn't even know how to start to talk about it. 
A woman is like a post office. We send letters. Everybody will send letters to the post office. And we don't even ask the post office if they have anything to send. Because everybody comes there. She's the same post office. The, the man runs to her. The children run to her. The school will come. They run to her. Everybody just runs to a woman. But I just want us to take something out. Because when you look at it, you look at somebody like Sarah in the Bible. Sarah in the Bible, we call her a mother. But can we put ourselves in her shoes, calling her mother, and she didn't have a child? If we look at somebody like Esther in the Bible, Esther was living in the king's palace, but her family, they were living on the streets. Esther was living in the king's palace. Meanwhile, her own tribe, they were about to be removed from the face of the world. There are times a woman carries burden that she cannot even express to you. Yes, she's there busy trying to solve your problem. You look at somebody like Mary in the Bible. How will she explain to people that she's pregnant? So we, we go through lots of complicated things. A woman goes through complicated things throughout her life. Some she cannot even begin to explain it. But I just want us to, if we can just quickly go to, because I won't want us to stay today and we don't refer to the Bible. Um, quickly go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Because of time, I'm just going to read this. It says, so God created man in his own image. In the image of, in the image and likeness of God, he created him, male and female, he created them. So I'm going to paraphrase. God created Ifoma in his what? Image. So he's more like you saying God created entirely in his image. Now, if you look at it, you talk about a woman. I've, I've listened to lots of us talking. We're talking about she gets experience from this. The child will get experience from this. Maybe the older generation, they will get experience from this person, you know. And then in my culture, I'll say, oh, she's there to eat this, you know. And then you ask yourself, when Eve was created, she was created in the image of God. Was Eve ever a child? Eve was never a child. Eve never learned how to walk like you and I. Eve never learned how to talk like you and I. Eve never, like, you know, started, she never, like, okay, today you're feeding your child um, small baby food, then from there to Nshima. No. Bible said God created what? In his own image. Created it for me. If I became an adult. So I can tell you, Eve did not have much mothers to depend on. No. Another woman that you can talk about would be Mary. He, no, it has never happened in the history. People have been getting pregnant. They will tell you what to do. But in her own case, no. She can't even explain to people how she got pregnant. She can't even talk about it. So mm. if you look at these situations, at times a woman is somebody that is without, you know, there's nobody she can lean on for experience. Mm -hmm. And then you ask yourself, why is it so? And that's why I want us to take us back to Genesis. It says God made her in his own image. What does that mean? Why? So that you rely on what? On who? God. So a woman is somebody that God has made so that you rely on him. Mm -hmm. Like Eve didn't have anybody. Eve was more like, you know, God just created her. All her senses. She started working. She knew what she had to know and all that. That is who a woman is. You should be somebody, a mother. You should be somebody that you rely on God. The Holy Spirit should be your partner. The Holy Spirit should be the one teaching you. Because I can tell you, there are lots of things that even your mother, she's a mother because she can't solve even for you. That's why you will get to a situation that is not, is not advice, is not this. They have their own place, but the best place is in the place of prayer. Is in the place of the Holy Spirit telling you. Is the Holy Spirit that will tell you the times to speak to your husband. Is the Holy Spirit that will tell you how to pray for your children. Is the Holy Spirit that will understand your heartbreak. There are lots of things that women go through that they can't open their mouth and say. But God wants us, wants to use that role that we should, you know, that role. He wants us to step into that role and always connect to Him and always look unto Him and always ask Him, Father. 
I depend on you because mm-hmm. there's nobody to, 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 to advise. Mm-hmm. There's no mm-hmm. way. I've come to the end of the road. I need you, oh Lord, to help me as a mother. I need you to help me as a growing child. I need you to help me as a wife. I need you to help me as an elderly person, as an elderly person in the home. Maybe my husband is not there anymore. I need you, Holy Spirit. I need mm-hmm. you, Lord, to depend on you. I need you mm-hmm. for this kind of work that never worked all my life. It's only you that I can Amen. help. Amen. So Amen. He's been teaching us how to depend on God. We do not depend on any other thing but God. Mm-hmm. So from now, if you've always been depending on things, they are good for advice. But the best place and always the first place to start and the last place to start is God. Go to him. He understands you. He created you in his image. So he expects you to come to him. He expects you. He says, if you lack knowledge, he says, come to me. He says, he will give you that knowledge that you lack so much. And then you know one thing I noticed about the, about the Bible. God, when you go to him, you don't always get what you want. He gives you what you need. A mother will not always give a child what he wants. A mother will always give a child what he needs. A mother will always say the truth. The Bible says what? Know the truth and the truth shall set you free. If you go to God, God will not not always pat you on the back. God will always direct you to the right path. It might be painful, but it will lead you to the right path. That is who a mother is. A mother is the one that directs someone back to the place of prayer. God is calling you and I. To take up that the place of being a mother, the place of doing what God will do, the place of having her eyes open to tiny details. I tell people, a woman takes tiny details in the house, puts it into into perception, is mindful of those tiny things. The same way God is mindful of you. He says, even the hair on your head, he is mindful of you. That is what a woman does. A man comes and does the overview. You are there to take care of the tiny details. You are there to be the one that wake up and pray for your family. So at this point, I just want us to pray for women because of time. Like I said, um, I looked, I looked, and I realized we are really going out of time. I just want us to look at Isaiah sixty six thirteen. Isaiah sixty six thirteen. Isaiah 67. If you're there, you can unmute yourself and please read. I'll pre- I will appreciate it if somebody reads Isaiah 66, verse 13. As one who smiles, so will I confound you, and ye shall be confounded in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. You know, the, the, the way we have been called as a mother and we comfort people, Bible says he will comfort you. God will always comfort you. So I'm, as I'm speaking, I'm reaching out to you and asking you to know and telling you this is the word of God. The Lord will comfort you. The way, of, the way the Lord will comfort Amen. Jerusalem, that's the way the Lord will comfort you. Because Amen. most times a woman's heart is so broken. Most times you look at your children and you go like, what is it? Why are they doing this to me? You can't even express how your heart feels. But the Lord will comfort you. So Amen. when you're in that position, when you're in that position and you feel there's nothing going wrong, just surrender yourself to the Lord. Know yeah, that the Lord yeah. will comfort you. Yeah. Know that the Lord will be the one, oh God, that will touch you and, and put you in the right um, per, um, per, per perception. Can we just pray? Um, it's because of time. There's a lot that would have just said, but I wanted us to take that out that we can always run to the Lord. Can we just yeah. begin to pray for every mother in this place? Thank and you, ask Jesus. that the Lord that the Lord will breathe upon afresh. But some of us that have been so tired, some of us that have been running, we can't run anymore. Ask that the Lord will comfort us. Ask that the Lord will renew our strength. Ask that the Lord will touch us this, this afternoon. Ask that the Lord will comfort us, will shield us in his everlasting arms. Pray for your mothers. Pray for your grandmothers. Wherever state they are, pray for every woman, every girl. Motherhood stands when you become a, a girl. They go through different stages. Pray for every female child that is here. Begin to pray, 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 pray. I want all the men to pray. Pray for our, our mothers. 
children. All the children. Pray for our mothers. Pray for them that they will be what God has called them to be. Pray for them that they will take their position in this generation. Pray for them that they will speak the truth. Pray for them that they will be able to rely on the Lord. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for them. Father Lord, we thank you, King of Kings, O oh God, for creating us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for all that you have put, O oh God, inside of women. We thank you, O oh God, for making us mothers, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for drawing us, O oh God, and putting us in this position because you want to change our generation. Thank you, Lord, our Heavenly Father, O oh God, because of the kind of unction that you have given us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that we'll be able to function, O oh God, in these places, O oh God, that you have put us, O oh God, in our homes, in our societies, in our workplaces, O oh Lord. May we exhibit that, O oh God, that you have put in us. May we draw men, O oh God, to people, O oh God, to, to you. We may we draw men, may we comfort others, O oh Lord. That that we have heard today about sympathy, about empathy, I ask, O oh Lord, that we put it into practice as mothers, O oh God. Father, I ask, O oh Lord, for your leading, O oh God, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if we read 2 Corinthians 2, 9, 12, 9, 9, it's talking about the grace that is sufficient for you. He says, the grace is not just sufficient for you for nothing. The grace is sufficient for you that, that the power of God will be made perfect. So let's ask that because God has given us that grace, that the power of God will be made perfect in our lives. And that when we're perfecting it, we'll be showcasing it in the lives of our children, when we relate with our husband, the way we relate outside. Let us ask for the God's grace and that you'll be made perfect in us. Let's ask for God's grace for every mother here. Let's begin to ask for his grace, his grace upon us, his grace upon us, his grace upon us, his grace upon us. Grace upon us. I remember what Sister Ophon talked about. He will, she will come back and she's so tired. Let's ask for grace. It's a yeah. woman that will take a child to school. It's a mm. woman that will cook. It's a woman that will clean. It's a woman mm -hmm. that will save. It's a woman. Mm -hmm. It's all about a woman. And what mm -hmm. is it when the child is not doing well? It is a woman's mm. fault. We need God's grace. We need God's grace. Father, grant us the grace. Let us, oh God, let, 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 let your power be made manifest, oh God, in us. In the mighty mm. name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the yeah. mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. If we read yeah. Romans 8, yeah. 26 to, 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 to I think about 26 to 27. It talks about the Holy Spirit helping us in our weakness. You know, mm. it's so funny they call us the weaker vessels, and yet mm -hmm. they expect so much strength for, from us. Mm -hmm. So we're going to ask God in our weakness, mm -hmm. make us strong. In our mm -hmm. weakness, strengthen us. In our mm -hmm. weakness, Father Lord, make us strong. I've come mm -hmm. to realize that you get to a state that stress, even stress, will affect your sleeping, stress will affect your hormones, stress yeah. will change you, stress will cause all sorts of things. We're going to mm -hmm. ask Lord that in our weakness, oh Lord, that he will make us strong. That yeah. spiritually will grow from glory to glory. That spiritually, oh God, will, will come out standing, oh Lord. Yes, that way, yes, oh God, yes. all the things around us that are us, yes, that are pulling us down, yes, that Lord will be able to lean on you and will gather strength, oh God, from you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I decree, oh God, our heavenly Father, this afternoon, oh Lord, that Lord, oh God, will receive favor from the east, from the west, from the north. Yes. But the Lord, oh God, according to Proverbs, oh God, our children will call us blessed. Our husband, oh God, will speak, oh God, and concerning us. Hallelujah. Our husband will boast, oh God, because of us. Our mothers, oh Lord, will be proud of their children. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will not bring shame to our family. We will mm -hmm. not bring shame to ourselves. We will not yes. bring shame to this generation. In the mighty mm -hmm. name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father Lord, we will be honored for that, oh God, that you have called us. We'll stand, Amen. oh God, our Heavenly Father, according to your word, oh Lord, our Heavenly Father. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We will not bury any of your children. Yes. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We will not mm -hmm. stay and be weeping all night and will not reap the fruit of our labor. In the mm -hmm. mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. King of kings, oh God, we will look at our children and we will be able to deposit inside of them the yes. work 
the right things over the precepts of our Lord Hallelujah. Jesus Christ. Father Lord, we ask, O King of Kings, that that, O God, that you have taught us, that we'll be able to pass it on to the generations coming, O God, behind us. Father Lord, that they will listen, that they will listen, that they will hear you. I ask, mm-hmm. O Lord, that Heavenly Father, according to your word in Isaiah, that Lord, O God, that children will hear your voice as they're walking. Mm-hmm. They'll hear your voice behind them back to direct yes. you. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all the brothers in this house of God today. We ask, O Lord, that even as we've had fun, O Lord, let us Mm. be rich in you, God. Let us depend on you, God. Let us be, O God, live an impactful life in this generation, in our families, in our neighborhood, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Hallelujah. I'm just going to ask Pastor to just quickly bless us and then we'll close here. Father and our God, we thank you for the wonderful time in your presence today, Lord. Father, indeed, you have been good to us as individuals, as families, and as a community, as your people. Lord, you've been good to us. Father, we thank you for this time in your presence, O Lord, and for what today actually commemorates, O Lord. Father, today we dedicate as Mother's Day. For Lord, you are not just our father, you are also our mother. In you, Lord, we have both father and mother. You are a complete God, Father. And Lord, today we ask that you look upon your daughters, O oh Lord, who are our mothers. Alina. Father, you have made this world that any person that is coming into this world must pass through a woman. Even when you decided to step into you, this earth. You did not break your own rule, Lord. You did not jump from the sky. You went through a woman. And Lord, yeah. you have given women this wonderful position, oh God. And every good thing that comes to this earth must pass through a woman. And Lord, because of it, oh Lord, the devil fights the woman. The devil tries to make the woman, the Bible says in Revelations, she wanted to cast her his floor so that the waters can take the woman away permanently, oh God. Father, because of that, the devil is always fighting the woman. He makes sure that the woman doesn't fulfill the role which you have planted her from eternity, that she should bring forth every good thing to this earth. Father, we pray for these women, oh Lord, that Lord, their paths, their paths, the journey, oh Lord, that you have orchestrated in the spiritual realm for them, that they should fulfill when they are here on earth, Lord, Amen. those parts be made open in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any path that has been crossed, any path that water is not flowing again, today, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, let such parts be opened in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let some channels be opened in the name of Jesus. Amen. That your water of life will flow through these women to reach the world that you have planted them in, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you. Thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. We yes. pray that our women, oh Lord, yes. fill their roles in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the devil will not give them a fake assignment Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that the devil will not deceive them anymore in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, Amen. Vessels of honor, vessels of glory, they Hallelujah. will shine in your house Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for their physical healing, oh God. I pray for their spiritual healing that no one here, oh God, will live here sick in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we bless your name. Be thou exalted, O Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, everybody, for being part of today. Um, I really enjoyed the the quiz, the, the tips, and, you know, like I had lots of things Contributions. Um, yeah, the contributions. Thank you for mm-hmm. making it special. And I would just encourage our, our daddies, our children, please let today be special. Um, if she's always the one cooking, try and cook today. Even if it doesn't taste so well, it doesn't matter. You know, <laughs> just, just, just relieve her of that, that pressure. Want. You know, relieve her of, one. Yeah, relieve her of <laughs> that <laughs> pressure. I, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm not going to cook today. Pass has already. Yeah, my husband yes, doesn't cook today. Me too. So just, just relieve her of that, <laughs> pre- <laughs> that pressure. If it means, and I'm not saying you have to buy something expensive, 
please, yeah. if it's one pound, so one pound worth something. If, I, if you don't want to spend money because I know pound is, like, is, is difficult to come by, just this is a good area. Walk out, bring, go and look for flour. You don't need to buy. Just do something different for her. Let her know she's appreciated. So please yeah, do something wonderful, not just for the mother and for your children. Because when you do it for your children, your children will also learn, you know, to appreciate you when you age. Yeah. So you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it so that your children will know. Someday you'll be 90 something and your children will come to you. So let's make today special so that when you're 80 something, you will see your grandchildren. Your children will bring your grandchildren to you. So we're just going to thank God and then let it not just be today. Because some of them will do it today and then tomorrow is like, you know, sometimes I tease my husband. I'm like, ah, I'm now a slave in this house, you know. And then again, for some of us, I remember two weeks ago, oh my house, God, my house was almost like upside down. Because I had to like, no, I'm not doing anything. Sometimes we need to pause and take rest. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a machine, if your machine works 24 hours, it will, it will crumble, it will stop. So sometimes, please leave all those things, unless you, you can do it all together. But if you find out that it's affecting you, take your time. Take your time. Put things in, you know, in priority. What is more important? I've come to realize that, look, your house is tidy, is good. Will that take you to heaven? Ask yourself. <laughs> You know, there are things that should be more important. Doing all those things that are right. But tell yourself, if you don't want to go to heaven very fast, you better, you better step aside and rest. If not, believe you me, you will go to heaven very fast. And I can tell you, if you go to heaven very fast, one year the man will finish mourning you. You go, pastor will gladly wed you and another woman. I'm being honest to you. So we need to at times take care of ourselves. I'm using myself as an example. I've yeah. looked at myself and I'm like, what? Stress. I need to really de-stress. So please, it's just, it's just an advice. Let's take time to appreciate this world. Appreciate yeah. things. Appreciate the time with our children. Appreciate, take, you know, just forget the bills at times, you know, and just relax. And um, mm. at that, I will just um, remind us of the um, end of the month that is our 10th year anniversary. Um, we'll do it um, virtually, but just invite everybody, come with a, thans, a heart of thanksgiving that um, the church, God has kept this church for 10 years. We might not be big, but I can tell you, I, 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 go, to, I, I, I go to meetings. When I mean meetings, I see men of God that I know that they are, they are more spiritual than me, more spiritual than my, my, past, my husband, and the kind of things they hear and see you'll be wondering. There's nobody in this congregation that can't go to their house and eat. I'm telling you, I am that comfortable with every one of you, you know? But when I hear some things poisoning in the house of God, I hear some funny things in the house of God. I just thank God for the congregation that I have. And I, I thank God for every one of you. And I ask, let us come together and thank God for what he has done for us. You know, mm. let's just begin to thank him, you know, as mm -hmm. we look forward to the um, um, March, end of the month, March. Mm -hmm. you know, and today again marks the end of the fasting and prayer. Hey, glory be to God. I know that a lot, of, a lot of people have been looking forward to, you know, eating and eating. Yeah. Please advise don't eat too much, depending on your tummy. If you eat too <laughs> much, it might go, also you. be a problem. Do. <laughs> yeah, do just, do. just take your time. You know, to start eating. Okay. Allow your tummy to get used to, you know, food um, 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 more. So on that, I just want to say thank you so much. And if you can just share the grace, you can stay back if you still want to chat with um, anybody. Okay? Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace. Thank you very much, mothers and fathers. Go and have control of the mother. Happy Mother's Day to everyone.
Happy Mother's Day to every woman in the house. Thank you. Bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bye. Amen. Bye. See you on Sunday. Happy Mother's Day to all the women in the house. Bye. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. That was funny. You should hide for control. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, Bye, everyone. Put your feet up. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you for me. Thank you, everyone that participated. <laughs> Thank you for all the answers. Okay. Bye. God bless you all. God bless. In the name of Jesus, Amen. vessels of honor, vessels of glory, they will shine in your house. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray for their physical healing, oh God. I pray for their spiritual healing that no woman here, oh God, will live here sick. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Lord, we bless your name. Be thou exalted, oh Lord. Blessed be your holy name, Father. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everybody, for being part of today. Um, I really enjoyed the the quiz, the, the tips, and the, you know, like I had lots of things. Contributions. Today. Um, yeah, the contributions. Thank you for Thank making you. it special. And I'll just encourage our, our daddies, our children, please let today be special. Um, if she's always the one cooking, try and cook today. Even if it doesn't taste so well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, just, just just relieve her of that, that's of that a good pressure. One. You know, relieve that's her a good of, one. Yeah, relieve her of that <laughs> pressure. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm not going to cook today. Pass has already. Yeah, my husband is going to cook today. <laughs> Me too. So just, just relieve her of that, <laughs> pressure, of that pressure. If it means, and I'm not saying you have to buy something expensive. Please, yeah. if it's one pound. So one pound worth something. If, I, if you don't want to spend money because I know pound is, like, is, is difficult to come by, just, this is a good area. Walk out, bring, go and look for flour. You don't need to buy. Just do something different for her. Let her know she's appreciated. So please yeah, do something wonderful, not just for the mother and for your children. Because when you do it for your children, your children will also learn, you know, to appreciate you when you age. So you're not just doing it for yourself. You're doing it so that your children will know. Someday you'll be 90 something and your children will come to you. So let's make today special so that when you're 80 something, you will see your grandchildren. Your children will bring your grandchildren to you. So we're just going to thank God and then let it not just be today. Because some of them will do it today and then tomorrow is like, you know, sometimes I tease my husband. I'm like, ah, I'm now a slave in this house. You know, that and then again, for some of us, I remember two weeks ago, oh my house, God, my house was almost like upside down because I had to like, no, I'm not doing anything. Sometimes we need to pause and take rest. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a machine, if you machine works 24 hours, it will, it will crumble, it will stop. So sometimes please leave all those things unless you, you can do it all together. But if you find out that it's affecting you, Take your time. Take your time. Put things in, you know, in parity. What is more important? I've come to realize that, look, your house is tidy, is good. Will that take you to heaven? Ask yourself. <laughs> you know, there are things that should be more important. Doing all those things that are right. But tell yourself, if you don't want to go to heaven very fast, you better, you better step aside and rest. If not, believe you me, you will go to heaven very fast. And I can tell you, if you go to heaven very fast, one year, the man will finish mourning you. You will go, pastor will gladly wed you and another woman. I'm being honest to you. So we need to at times take care of ourselves. I'm using myself as an example. I've looked at myself and I'm like, what? Stress. I need to really distress. So please, it's just, it's just an advice. Let's take time to appreciate this world. Appreciate yes. things. Appreciate the time with our children. Appreciate, take, you know, just forget the bills at times, you know, and just relax. And then um, mm. at that, I will just um, remind us of the um, end of the month that is our 10th year anniversary. 
um, we'll do it um, virtually, but just invite everybody, come with a, thanks, a heart of thanksgiving that um, the church, God has kept this church for 10 years. We might not be big, but I can tell you, I, I, I go to, I, I, I go to meetings. When I mean meetings, I see men of God that I know that they are, they are more spiritual than me, more spiritual than my, my, past, my husband, and the kind of things they hear and see, you'll be wondering. There's nobody in this congregation that I can't go to their house and eat. I'm telling you, I am that comfortable with every one of you, you know? But when I hear some things poisoning in the house of God, I hear some funny things in the house of God. I just thank God for the congregation that I have. And I, I thank God for every one of you. And I ask, let us come together and thank God for what he has done for us. You know, mm. let's just begin to thank him, you know, as mm -hmm. we move forward to the um, um, March, end of the month, March. Mm -hmm. you know, and today again marks the end of the fasting and prayer. Hey, glory be to God. I know that a lot, of, a lot of people have been looking forward to, you know, eating and eating. Yeah. Please advise don't eat too much, depending on your tummy. If you eat too <laughs> much, it might go. also be a problem. Do. <laughs> yeah, do just, do. just take your time. You know, to start eating. You allow your tummy to get used to, you know, food um, <laughs> um, more. So on that, I just want to say thank you so much. And if you can just share the grace, you can stay back if you still want to chat with um, anybody. Okay? Praise the Lord. Let's share the grace. Thank you very much, mothers and fathers. Go and have control of the control. Happy Mother's Day to everyone. Happy Mother's Day to every woman in the house. Yeah. Thank you. Bless each and every one of you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bye. Amen. Bye. See you on Sunday. Happy, Happy Mother's Day to all the women in the house. Bye. Okay. Thank you. Happy Mother's, Mother's Day. Happy Thank Mother's you. Day. That was funny. You hide for control. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye, 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 Bye. Put your feet up. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you, Thank you, for Thank you for everyone that participated. <laughs> Thank you for all the answers. Okay. Bye. God bless you all. God bless.